Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. We're going to be talking about Liverpool today. We're going to be talking ahead of the new season about Liverpool and about how they can go about their business this season and possibly become Premier League champions yet again. How can Liverpool take the crown of Manchester City going forward this season? We're going to be looking at the Liverpool team. We're going to be looking at Liverpool's chances, analysing the Liverpool squad and how they may set up lineup or anything along them lines and how the season may play out for them across this forthcoming campaign. But before we get into all of that, I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both things are always and forever be greatly appreciated. But for now, let's get into the video. An interesting one, obviously, because a lot's been made about Liverpool in this uh, in this summer and of course off the back end of last season. Um, you know, Liverpool had a, an incredible campaign, an incredible journey. Uh, for the entirety of the last campaign in which they were in contention right to the very last for all four of the major trophies. They won the Carabao Cup, they won the FA Cup, they just fell short of the, of the Premier League and of course lost in the Champions League final to Real Madrid. Um, it was a season in which no one expected Liverpool really to do much well. If you rem remember at the beginning of the season, people were expecting them to probably finish within the top four, but... Uh, and maybe go on a cup run, but that was about it. No one was expecting them to have the strength and depth or the strength and character or the strength and even their starting eleven to really mount up a challenge to the likes of Manchester City and even Chelsea at that time who were being talked about as heavy favourites as well. But of course, that's how it played out. And you look ahead to this season coming up and, you know... A lot of people are moving them more into the conversation of contenders, uh, contenders for at least the Premier League. Other cups will vary on who they draw and everything. Um, but for the Premier League, they are definitely contenders. They are serious contenders after their business this summer. You can kind of see that as well. But there are just a few question marks that people are beginning to pick up on, or question marks that I think need to be sort of addressed before the new season begins. So ultimately, you, you begin by looking at their, their, their transfer business. And look, the big one, obviously, outgoing-wise, is going to be the, 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 the departure of one Sadio Mane. Sadio Mane, big character, not just in the Liverpool dressing room, but also a big player on the pitch as well. Being a part of Liverpool for some incredible moments down the years since his arrival from Southampton. Uh, helped Liverpool uh, take their way step by step to being back on top of Europe, on top of England, uh, back to winning trophies again. Big, big loss. And you can instantly see that their team takes a bit of a hit from his departure. Takumi Minamino adds depth to their squad. He's another one who left this summer, as well as Nico Williams. Uh, not as massive a departure, in my opinion, as Mane, either of those two, but still pretty big in terms of uh, in terms of their squad depth that they provide and, and in terms of the cover that they provide as well. But it was all of them were understandable as to why they left. They wanted more game time. They weren't really going to get it because they... Or, or they wanted a new challenge in Mane's case, but they weren't really going to get it at Liverpool. Understandable why they all left, and they left all in a respectful kind of way. You look at the incomings on the other side of the coin, and you look at Darwin Nunes. Darwin Nunes, obviously, all eyes are going to be on him uh, as far as at Liverpool this summer. Obviously, apart from your usual suspects and the likes of Mohamed Salah and, and Virgil van Dijk and Trent Alexander-Arnold. All eyes are going to be on him. He's obviously Liverpool's new shiny toy. The big money signing this summer that has arrived from Benfica with a, with a high reputation. A lot of promise about him. A lot of expectation. And I've made a few videos on him in the past that you can go back and check out. And I've talked about him and I think that he will be a great fit for Liverpool. It will obviously just be interesting to see how he fits in. Does he hit the ground running? That kind of thing and so on and so forth. Also walking through the door at Anfield this summer, Fabio Carvalho. A little bit of an unknown figure. We don't really know where he's going to fit in within this Liverpool team. He's, he's quite versatile in that respect. So we could go across everywhere. But it seems even at 19 years of age, he's going to play a part this season in some way, shape or form within the start, within, within at least the senior squad. So it does seem like he's got big plans and expectations of him from Jurgen Klopp going forward. Also walking through the door was Calvin Ramsey. 
uh, right back, formerly now of Aberdeen. He comes in as Trent Alexander-Arnold's understudy, but it does appear that he could also play a part this season in some way, shape or form in the senior squad as well, backing up Trent when Trent needs a rest, Trent is injured, Trent suspended, or whatever it may be to do with Trent Alexander-Arnold, he will be on standby in Trent's absence. I think you could also possibly throw in Luis Diaz in there. I know he obviously arrived in January. He's had half a season and he's really hit the ground running with the Reds in that half a season. So it will be interesting to see how Diaz uh, goes about his business and continues to evolve his game and everything with obviously more time with his teammates, more time with Jurgen Klopp and obviously more time in the Premier League. Obviously his transfer spare was sped up quickly and happened, I think, earlier than what many people are expecting. I would have expected Diaz's, if that was going to happen, would have probably happen this summer. But with Tottenham sniffing around and being interested, of course, things escalated pretty quickly in January. But that seems to be it in terms of transfer business. There has been, obviously, a, a few rumours buzzing around. A few names have been thrown out there. Even Jurgen Klopp said himself that Julian Ward, the, uh, the, the main transfer guy now, uh, it is still working hard behind the scenes and everything. I would probably suggest that things, unless things take a turn in, ter in terms of someone becoming available, if uh, maybe if something mad happened injury-wise or anything along those lines, I would suspect that Liverpool's transfer business is done in terms of incomings. Maybe there's a few players that are going to go out on loan. Maybe the few of the youngsters are going to go out on loan. Or maybe there's a few contracts here and there to tie up. But I would strongly suspect that the main bulk of Liverpool's transfer activity is done, dusted and complete. So that does kind of lead on to the question, is the squad good enough and is it good enough to obviously win the Premier League off of Manchester City? Now, when you look at the starting 11, the starting 11 of Liverpool has obviously uh, been uh, said numerous times in the past that it is arguably the strongest starting 11 in the Premier League. Even stronger than Manchester City. The only thing that Manchester City had over Liverpool was a strength in depth. Now, obviously, with Sadio Mane leaving, you do see that that starting 11 takes a, ma takes a bit of a hit. It takes, it takes a big hit uh, in terms of that aspect. But when you look at the goalkeeper, reliable and strong in Alisson. You look at the defence, solid. You can't really uh, say anything other than very solid and reliable for the, for the most part. Trent Alexander-Arnold at right back, Andy Robertson at left back, Virgil van Dijk at centre back. I think you'll see a lot more of Ibrahima Kanate this season over Joel Matip. You move into the midfield. There's been a lot of talk over the midfield and we'll get on to that. But for the most part, it is kind of reliable in terms of the starting 11 of that midfield. Um, and then obviously you look at the, the front line and there are... Question marks that are starting to develop a little bit. Can Diaz continue his form? Can Mohamed Salah uh, refine his uh, goal scoring ability that it sort of lost towards the end of last season a little bit? And of course, will Darwin Nunes hit the ground running in the Premier League? There are a few question marks that I've been uh, asked of further up the field that obviously takes away from this whole Liverpool have one of the or the strongest starting 11 in the Premier League right now. So we move on to squad depth. The squad built season after season, obviously under Jurgen Klopp, has obviously grown stronger and stronger over the years. And with pretty much every new addition has come something new to bring to the table, something new to bring to the squad and something that the squad was lacking before. Last season was obviously the perfect display of all of those things coming together. Last season, no one predicted that Liverpool would go the distance in every major competition, but they did. And you could tell that because different p different pay uh, players played their part at different times, at key times in key parts of each and every competition throughout the entire season. You had Luis Diaz come in in January. He played his part um, in the second half of the season in Liverpool's uh, title charge and chasing down Manchester City right to the final day. You had Takumi Minamino, who was a top goal scorer in both the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup, the two cups that obviously Liverpool went on to win. And obviously in the Champions League, you had the reliable likes of uh, Sadio Mane and Mohamed Salah, of course. But again, Firmino may be now seen as more 
of a rotational player in that front three, but he still made his mark. Same way that obviously the likes of Naby Keita did in midfield. The same way that uh, you know the likes of Jordan Henderson, K, uh, uh, Fabinho, and Thiago were the stronghold of that midfield. Keita still played his part. Curtis Jones came in every now and again, and I know that he gets a lot of stick, but played his part at, at key stages. And even if you go as far as the beginning of the season, the likes of Diego Jota, obviously, um, scoring plenty of goals right at the beginning. And even Harvey Elliott. Harvey Elliott came in before, obviously, his nasty injury. Harvey Elliott came in and was one of the brightest stars in that Liverpool team for a time, obviously, before he got injured. So, there is... There is some, something to go off there in terms of the squad's strength in depth. And, you know, even if you go as far down as looking at the entirety of the team, the backup goalkeeper is a solid choice. He showed that again last season in the cup competitions. We've got a new right back now who looks to obviously make a name for himself. Probably not for the immediate future, but he will be on standby as the season goes on. Costa Shimikas scored the winner in the FA Cup and has been a solid backup to Robertson ever since his arrival. You've got four or five solid options at centre-back. Beyond Van Dijk, of course, the likes of Joel Matip, Joe Gomez, who's obviously signed a new deal, Ibrahima Kanate, which we'll see a lot more of this season, I bet, and, of course, the likes of uh, uh, Nathan Phil uh, Nat Phillips as well. Like there, there are plenty of options there. You've got a midfield that's mixing up youth and experience. Again, we'll get onto that a little bit later. And then interchanging and fluid forward line that, again, mixes experience, a little bit of youth, but a plenty of speed and versatility and fluidity that can obviously interchange and they can swap roles and they can swap positions and they can offer different things at different times depending on what the situation is in need of in certain types of matches. There's a lot going on with this squad, a lot going on with this team and obviously the chef, in this case Jurgen Klopp, has got to obviously blend these uh, ingredients together to create the perfect formula, to create the perfect recipe for these types of games. You can make the argument that the personnel is there. You can make the argument that the quantity is there. The, the balance of the squad is there. The quality is there. I just think it's a case of the reliability. I think people are getting it a bit twisted. I've watched a lot of videos over the summer on Liverpool. And they're each saying the same thing. That the midfield particularly isn't good enough. Uh, or isn't, uh, isn't, isn't filled with enough quality enough. I don't think it's the quality. I think it's the reliability. And I think that that reliability has caused questions throughout this team. I've already talked about some of the new people that are coming in, such as Darwin Nunes. Can he hit the ground running? Can Luis Diaz um, continue his bright start to his Liverpool career? Even some of the veterans, can Mohamed Salah continue his goal-scoring form or, or, or even get back his goal-scoring form after what was a tricky end to the season, the last campaign? But it's mainly about the midfield that everybody has their questions. And it's sort of understandable in a way. I understand where people are coming from. And again, I've talked about this in a previous video. But a lot of Liverpool fans wanted to see Liverpool go after a big name target in that midfield. A lot of names were swirling around. There was obviously Aurelien Chouinemi before he chose Real Madrid. There were a couple of other names as well. Jude Bellingham is one that's sticking around. And we seem to be very much um, monitoring his situation. And we're possibly going to be going in for him next season. Uh, or next summer, should I say. But it does seem that everybody wanted a new midfield addition. Uh, uh, for this summer, but it seems that we may have to wait for next summer to get that addressed. And it is understandable. There are many concerns in that midfield that I think are open for debate. I think they're open for concern and open for a conversation to be talked about. You look at Jordan Henderson, he's getting on a bit and not seen as a more favourable option anymore when in comparison to the likes of Thiago Alcantara and Fabinho. You've got James Milner, signed a new one-year deal, but is 36 years of age. You've got Thiago himself with his injury concerns. He's amazing when he's on the pitch, but 
a little bit injury prone. You've got Naby Keita with a similar issue. He's a bit injury prone. He's also very, he's also quite inconsistent. He's done well over the past season or so to, to sort of rectify that a little bit. But there are still little bits of his game that needs improving, mainly in terms of goal scoring from midfield, in my opinion. And then you look at the youngsters, the likes of Harvey Elliott, Curtis Jones and Fabio Carvalho. Not exactly the most reliable right now. They are still a bit of unknown figures in this Liverpool side. Curtis Jones is a massive season for him. Harvey Elliott, it'll be interesting to see if he can pick up where he sort of left off last season before his injury. And Carvalho is a bit of a wild card. We don't really know where, what role he's going to fit in, where he's going to be playing. He's quite versatile in that aspect, which could be a very good thing. Just keep opposition guessing, but it's about finding his role, nailing down his place and really making it his own. And it's going to be interesting to see how he fits in to this Liverpool squad. And of course, on the outskirts, you have Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, someone who I thought would be on his way out of Liverpool this summer. But it seems we've got him around for at least another season, which could be interesting to see uh, his role, how he fits in and how he will obviously fit in with the squad and how professional he will be going forward. It's a midfield full of what-if questions. Assuming everything goes to plan, I believe it's an interesting and exciting blend of youth and experience in midfield full of different styles, different ways of playing, different um, attitudes and everything along those lines that can create a very good mix and a very deep pan of options within that midfield. But... I, I would be lying if I said I wouldn't have minded seeing a new midfielder walk through the door like a Jude Bellingham, who I'm a massive fan of. And I definitely hope we do get at some point, whether it is going to be a shock by this summer or whether we're going to have to wait till next summer in order to purchase him or whatever it may be. Because I, I do see it not being the most reliable. It's, there's nothing to suggest that it's going to be the most reliable. I could be proven wrong. And I do believe in Jurgen Klopp to, to the fullest of my capability. That he sees fit. That these players are the right uh, players to be taking Liverpool forward into the, into the new season. And I have to go along with that. And it's, and it's going to be interesting to see how they grow and develop. Um... And it's just going to be interesting to see if they can obviously, if, if in terms of like Harvey Elliott's case, he can pick up where he left off. If Curtis Jones can grow, if Cater and Thiago can put their injury uh, past the side, if Henderson can keep going strong um, and Milner can keep going strong at their age, if uh, you know Fabinho can stay off, uh, can can remain a permanent fixture in that midfield without any kind of injuries or anything happening to him. And what, obviously, the future holds for new for newcomer Fabio Carvalho. It's going to be very interesting to see going forward what these players, particularly in that midfield area, can produce, what they can bring to the table, and if they have enough about them to be called upon for the big moments in the season where we're gonna where we're gonna be relying on them. Remember, it's a big and unique season ahead. There's plenty of change that's happening this season, whether it's at clubs or whether it's to the league in general. There's five subs now, which means squad depth is at its most uh, important that it has ever been in Premier League history. Top teams are refreshing their, their teams. We've already seen it with Liverpool firsthand, the, the way that they're going about their business this summer. But look at Manchester City bringing in Erling Haaland and bringing in Calvin Phillips and reinforcing their squad. You look at Chelsea, they've been forced into change behind the scenes with their hierarchy and everything, but they're also making changes on the pitch as well with the likes of Raheem Sterling and a lot more players that are being talked about and being linked with moving to the club. Even looking a little bit further down, Tottenham under Antonio Conte, they're going to be uh, a, a big force this season, you reckon, with obviously Conte at the helm. You then look even further down, Arsenal, they're strengthening. Manchester United, they're changing the way they're conducting their business this summer. It's going to be a massive season ahead for everybody involved, not just for Liverpool. Um, and, and as well as that as well, a unique season in which we've already talked about the five, five subs thing. There's a, there's a World Cup in the middle of it. The, the, the season literally breaks in two this season because the World Cup is in the middle between November, December time. And it could be a blessing because it could inspire 
or it could in influence pl some players to come back to their club and go even stronger or for, a, a, the, for the country that wins it, maybe it has a sort of knock-on effect of good form for those kinds of players that were obviously a big part of it or whatever it may be. And it could also have, obviously, an effect on the players that obviously get a rest during that time. I know that, obviously, Mohamed Salah and Luis Diaz of Liverpool won't be there, so that could have a good effect on them as well for the remainder of the season. But it could also throw a bit of a spanner in the works for some teams. Maybe some teams pick up some injuries here and there. Maybe some team, or some players come back and they're not in the right frame of mind or they're not in the right vein of form or whatever it may be it's going to be very interesting to see how the world cup is managed this season by a lot of these teams going forward um and as far as what liverpool are concerned look i don't have no problem with the fact that liverpool can't go on and win the premier league title i don't i think man city are the favorites but there's no reason why Liverpool can't be that thorn in their side yet again this season and chase them all the way down to the final day or just be completely relentless like they were in 2019-2020 season where, of course, they won the title and just go all out. I think, that obviously, that is going to be their game plan till the World Cup. It's just going to be go out there game after game and smash it like they were doing towards the back end of last season where they barely put a foot wrong and obviously we're going into every single game three or four days after their previous game and just bang one bang one bang one and just going along with that kind of routine yet again there's no reason why they can't do that again there are a few question marks i will admit the loss of Mane, the incoming transfer of, of Darwin Nunes, other question marks, particularly in that midfield area. But to me, I genuinely believe that Klopp has the right blend of team. There is a little bit of a reliability issue, but I think it's about time we put our faith and belief in these players that they can rise to the occasion when called upon and... And it's mainly based off last season. It's mainly based off last season, seeing how all of these squad players and everything all came together in the end and all managed to stand up in the right moments to be counted in the big and reliable moments that made Liverpool season last season so good and the journey so great that this team can be strong together as a unit and can be reliable in the big moments when called upon. Liverpool definitely can win the Premier League title. I'm obviously, fingers crossed, and praying and hoping that they win the Premier League title and that it can be proper again. But it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, not just in terms of what Liverpool have or may have in their ranks. It's going to be tough as well as seeing what City are doing, what Chelsea might be doing. It's going to be tough, but it's also going to be very interesting and exciting to look out for as well. I, If I was to go right now, it's a little bit biased in saying it, but I genuinely believe that Liverpool can do it. I just think that City will be the favourites going forward considering their history and their latest edition of Erling Haaland. But Liverpool got a strong team nonetheless and I think that there is a, bit of a, a little bit of an overreaction in terms of of Liverpool's midfield and Liverpool's strength and depth. There's a little bit of a reliability issue. I have no issue with the quality that that they could possess or have or do possess, should I say. But those are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of Liverpool for the forthcoming season? Where do you see the Reds finishing at the end of this campaign? How do you see their season going? Is there going to be more silverware at the end of it? Is it going to be disappointing? Is it going to be about where we believe they'll finish within the top two? I'd love to know your thoughts, your comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it on this particular topic down below in the comments section. Otherwise, hit the like button on the way out. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new. or want to see more content like this. Both things are always and forever be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video. And I will see and speak with you all again soon. And another video.